Hello everyone. Can you hear me? You had a good lunch? Okay. So for what you liked, tell me at least one thing which you didn't like in last two days. Or you liked everything, which is also possible. Something that you didn't like. Maybe it's too cold. I mean, it can be as trivial answer. <laughs> anyway, I was just trying to wake you up. <laughs> okay, so I will talk about, you know, a churn model. And um, this is specifically in the situation where mostly you are trying this for a market leader in any industry. And generally, if it's a market leader, their churn propensities are very, very low. And when the classes, you know, are not balanced, it becomes very difficult to use the traditional methods to actually model them. And uh, thankfully, I was working for one such client, I mean, one such uh, um, organizations where actually it was a single digit churn. At places, it was only 3%. And it was very, very difficult to model that. So we went through really tough time, but finally we could crack it. And I thought, why not I share that? And probably some of you might be in one of those industries where it might be helpful. And with some changes, you can literally use it from you know, FMCG to media industry to e-commerce industry in different places you can actually use it. In this case, it is a telecom. And because as you know, in India, it is more than 90% people use prepaid connections. So therefore, it's a non-committal market where people can choose whether they want to recharge their mobiles or not. Therefore, it becomes way all the more difficult compared to the Western world to figure out whether the person has really churned out or you know the person is just sleeping and can actually can come back and recharge their phone in some time. So what happens is you will, the moment you will, uh, the, the, Algorithms are so trivial, the moment you, you know, for say 10, 15 days you are for out for a vacation, you have stopped using the network because probably you are on a mountain hike and therefore you had no network to use. All of a sudden when you come back to town, you will start receiving calls. We will give you this best package and you know, start using because their most trivial algorithms has predicted that probably you are going to churn, why suddenly otherwise you will stop using. And then you will, you know, you will start receiving this, project, uh, you know, calls or you know, SMS that this is a better package. Please use it. While it probably was not really required, I mean, you are not using for a certain reason. And the moment you come back, you will start using. Why they had to actually offer you a better, lower-priced package and unnecessarily diluting their market? What is happening is when they are predicting people not charner as a charner, they give a very aggressive package to you. By that, suppose earlier you were paying 100 rupees for a certain kind of you know, schemes or certain benefits, they might ask you to pay only 65 rupees for that. What will happen next time you will never recharge with 100 rupees because you know that 65 rupees package is available. And it is a spiral challenge. So over the time, you know, from 65, they will drop you to 45, 45 to 35, and slowly it becomes a very infinite spiral loop because paying, I mean, making a person to pay higher is way difficult than making a person to pay lower. And therefore, they keep on diluting their own market, lose their profitability, lose their, they don't lose the market share, but just not to lose the market share, they lose a huge amount of profitability by that way. So therefore, attacking this problem was very important where the traditional algorithm was not able to actually solve it. Now, given that's the context, now there is a picture of a well, and I have said searching a well, um, because for this, we actually tied up with a with uh, Harvard Business School's biostatistics department. And uh, we used some techniques which ideally they use for searching wells in the oceans, in their oceanography uh, you know, studies. Because it's very difficult. You, know? you don't generally find a single well in the big oceans. So you, instead of finding single wells, you actually try to find a, what is called in Hindi the jhund of wells, like the group of wells. Right? And that's how they move. 
So if I have to actually search them like that, can I actually apply it back in our own telecom you know, organization also? So that's the reason why the wealth picture is there and the beautified name. So when, when the churn probability is only 3%, it almost becomes searching a needle in the haystack. And if that is the case, what is happening is you are spending so much on advertisement, there are direct sales, indirect sales, promotions, all other cost that you are incurring is actually becoming a leaking bucket without even knowing whom to target. On top of that, you are targeting wrong people and diluting your own market. So there are two ways that you are losing your profitability. So what is most important is, and this varies from uh, industry to industry, it's three key success are you know, important there. First is accurately predicting who are the churners. Now that is still possible if you do XG boost and all those kind of things. But it's equally important that you rightly predict who are the non-churners. Now, most of you, I know I am assuming you know what is the confusion matrix and you will find it's very difficult to optimize type one and type two error together. Now, telecom is a situation where they need to optimize both of them together. And they are okay to let go. Some people, like, they are okay not to reach a very high accuracy here, but it's important that they reach this high accuracy, which is very opposite to a credit score companies, a credit card company, or a um, medical, the healthcare uh, organizations. For if I am trying to figure out who is a cancer patient, it's very important that I figure, I mean, even if I can identify someone who is non-cancerous and make that person to go through some more test, it's still okay. But it's bad if the, a person has cancer, but I can't detect. This is, therefore, this is important that I accurately predict that. Similarly, for the loan market, it's okay if I don't give some good people, if I don't give loan to some good people. But high value loan cases, I would rather prefer to not give loan to anybody who has a probability to default. But in case of telecom, it's opposite. It's important that we predict very high this one. It's okay that I lose some people because ticket size, even if it's a very high value, may not be more than 1,000 to 1,000 rupees. And number of people who are that high value are so minuscule, you know, you really won't mind. But this is so important because it's an infinite spiral loop. And therefore, it's all the more important to predict very rightly who are the non churners And the biggest challenge is predicting well ahead. And the reason well ahead, we have so many telecom players. Most of the people, I mean, most of you here probably has multi-SIMs. Most of you are using, you know, different networks. If you don't get network on one uh, network player, you will actually switch to another one. And most of us has more than two SIMs actually in our pockets. If that is the case, switching is just a call. Okay, I want to switch. You don't need to always depict a behavior that you want to switch. So even when I'm getting that, okay, this is the behavior which is driving the churner, by that time, probably the person has already churned out. And you almost can't do anything. And that is the time when you have to bring back the person. It costs way more than if you could have identified earlier. So it needs to be identified or predicted so ahead of time that the person is just thinking, not had just done it. And because seams don't cost, and seams are available almost everywhere. Probably these days, seams have started being available at the pan shops or the cigarette shops. So people can just go out for a smoke and can switch the seam. So if it's, that is the challenge, then you know it's all the more difficult. It's much agile space compared to a healthcare or a loan. Because to apply for another, apply for loan in another organization is actually much more tougher than buying a seam. Then we found there is another challenge. The most of the cases we try to solve is the active churn. Active churn means I am taking a call that I want to churn out from this network. In telecom, there is something called induced churn. For example, you know that Vodafone probably offers 
a CUG connection where you can call from your mobile to few numbers free of cost or there are unlimited calls, certain benefits. You know that most of your evening calls or STD calls, like you know, people of us like who stay in Bangalore, Mumbai, away from our parents, mostly make a call every day towards the evening time to our parents and generally a longer conversation, a big amount of our consumptions goes there, right? Or probably we are staying out of spouse, that that's where the bigger consumption goes. Generally, office calls are not long. So, what happens is, when you churn out, you also ask your parents at that person, hey, listen, you know, move to Idea or Geo because they are offering such new uh, offer. So, even though the other person will never showcase a behavior that they want to churn or probably there was no reason for them to uh, churn, they will churn because you are the decision making power in that uh, family or in that group because you are churning, you are inducing another churn among the other people. Induced churn, figuring out through the traditional method becomes all the more difficult. So now all these four challenges that we were trying to tackle. So any, any, any time when you do any you know, churn propensity model, I think all of you have learned that no single shoes fits everyone. So you always try to do a segmentation. Now I just want to ask, you know, because I want to make it a more dialogue, I want to ask what kind of segmentation would you choose in a telecom market? So uh, any one of you has any idea in telecom market like worked or, or, see all of us actually use mobile, right? So how would you, if I would have given you an opportunity to segment a consumer base of telecom users, how would you have segmented it? But segmentation to customer lifetime value? First though, you will have to predict age, okay. Do telecom player always has our age? Do we give them our birth year all the time? Okay, okay. Okay, age of one. Okay, how many people use international roaming? Okay, postpaid prepaid, but here we are only talking prepaid. So let's segment, I mean. Calls and data, okay. Okay, so, so your so geolocation. Geolocation based on the time where mm -hmm. mostly spend the time and the network strength that usually your provider has in that strength is, has a lot to do with. Okay, uh, okay, very nice time. thought. Uh, hold on to that. Somebody else was saying? Data consumption. Data consumption. So ma'am also said call and the data consumption. And <laughs> rural and urban, okay. Okay. And when you say device used, what do you mean by that? Uh, some use high-end mobile, like we use uh, normal basic model. Okay, so you mean the differentiation between a smartphone versus uh, uh, feature phone or within smartphone the kind of the handset cost? Yeah, everything. Okay. Uh, amount of bills, so amount they spend, okay. You have access to contact Okay, okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Once your business customer doesn't matter to you much, even if it is 20% extra if your company is paying for it. Mm -hmm. That matters a lot, I think, again in this. Okay, term. okay. There is an app for ARP, which is an annual revenue for user. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's their spending capability or how much they are spending? What okay. Are how do I know that? Yeah, but that's not ethical to use it. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know, but doesn't mean that I can use it. For example, probably towards the, I mean, don't, don't take my words, but probably towards the night time, many of us are watching porn and I'm not supposed to protrude my nose into your life and figure out you are watching that, sorry. I cannot, so that's not ethically, try doesn't give us any, try doesn't allow us to even read your SMS, try doesn't allow us to figure out which websites you are going to, so let's not do anything unethical, no. I mean, we do, we can have uh, data, but no, no, not on that. So hold on to two uh, ideas. One, you said where I stay, what is the network strength? And you said if I 
can have all their you know call directory the typically called CDR and if I can have that okay okay good. So, we try to do a very, so okay, so tell you most organizations, most telecom organizations use it the usage based segmentations, okay. The kind of uh, uh, parameters that they use actually you already said how much call they do, how much uh, uh, consumption, how much they paid, how much data connections or you know how much of the MBs of data are you consuming, where you stay, urban, rural, all those kind of stuffs, age if I know, yes, well and good. But we found that kind of segmentations actually does not help us. So, why do you do segment? To actually identify people who are more homogeneous in terms of their spending, in terms of their you know usage pattern, but we did not find that is true. For example, if I go by ARPO, probably there are two people who are using 100 rupees recharge. There is one person who goes at the start of the month, pays a 100 rupee note, recharges by 100. There is another person who every 2 to 3 days go and recharge by 10 rupees. The second person is actually not affluent enough to take out 100 rupees at a time. And these two people's usage will be very different. Even though at the end of the month average spend both the people are 100. Many a times you will find that you know if you are spending 1000 bucks on phone calls, we have lot of our drivers or say the home like the maids who are actually coming from some other places like Bihar, UP and actually working they also spend that because they need to call their home. But they cannot recharge with a thousand bucks at the start of the month, they charge small small amounts at time. Now I cannot literally use both of their data together and build a model, it will not give me the reasons, the reason why she will churn versus the reason why I will churn are so different. So what we did, we and this is something we borrowed from a Tarkis Telecom, they did this segmentation. They said forget all those. We human being are such a social animals, we always prefer to stay and work at a place where people are of the similar cadets. So if a person who is a CEO, he will never stay at a housing society or somewhere where people are not of the same cadet. Similarly, you know all the you will find that you know all our maids or the you know different different economic strata people generally stay together, and you will find generally work together. Turkish Telecom, yeah. So, um, but then there was a challenge. What they did, they only from the CDR data, from the CDN data they could figure out from the network connectivity because whenever you are coming to work you are connecting every day to a certain network, latching to a certain network, going back home night time you are latching to a certain network. It is very easy to identify where you work and where you stay. Turkish Telecom only did by that, it worked magic for them. Now imagine a Mumbai or a Bangalore, just beside a soba you know properties there will be a big slum, right. So if I just do probably both of them are latching to the same network, if I do just by that it won't work. So uh, ARPU separation, you know the spend also we had to take on top of what we borrowed from them. So it become a simple three dimensional segmentations and we did not do any big k in segmentation or anything. We did a simple cross multiplication, so it is a Cartesian product, all of you understand Cartesian products. It is like 3 by 3 matrix, if there are say 40 different segments here, 20 different segments here and 3 different segments here, just multiply 40 by 20 multiplied by 3, we had those many micro segments. And when we analyzed their usage pattern, I mean then we look back their actually profile, we found they are so similar. Even if you plot the days they go and recharge, okay. So first thing is we did not do it for whole India, never that will work. This has been done in circles because telecom has their own circle like even Mumbai is a separate circle than Maharashtra, similarly Bangalore is a separate circle than Greater Karnataka. So we did it for one one circle, okay. Within that circle when we had this micro segments, we found that they are so similar. Even the locations, the day they recharge was coming to be very similar. For example, if it is a construction area, 
the construction people get paid probably once every week. And there is the only single day that is they get paid, either Wednesday or every Monday, something like that. They get paid every evening, they will go and recharge. Most of them will recharge a similar amount. The time they uh, you know, uh, call, the kind of amount do they use on the data, everything was so very similar. Not exactly similar, but they, we found a very, very good homogeneity when we created, instead of a segments, we created this micro segments, which are simple quotation products. Okay? So that did a big magic for us. Then we changed the whole concept. So all the, say the logistic regression, or a decision tree, or a random forest, whatever you are trying to do, ultimately you are trying to get, for every single person, what is the churn probability after this many days. Even when you are doing a survival model, you are checking what is the life for that person. So how many more days the person going to live with you? right and that is always calculated at n equal to one level this one we said we will not do that it doesn't matter whether it is me versus arun versus anybody else what matters is this micro segment to me so whatever i will define i'll define for that micro segment because we found so now this is the these are the graphs we actually and this is exactly where we used yes Exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay, so I mean, those micro segments, I just named them honeycomb. <laughs> Sorry? Yes, yes, yes. So it was mostly like, you know, if you, if you look at, so there might be, you know, 145, 160 such segments, micro segments. We didn't find name for them, so we just call them honeycomb. It's just my nomenclature. <laughs> Then what we looked at, so when I say their behaviors are same, now just plot a curve in a, for a whole month on your x-axis are the days. You can plot two kinds of curves. One is how much a person recharges and after which day then they again recharge. The amount of recharge is the highest of the curve. The day they recharge, there is a upward. Then there is another way you can draw this is which date and time they are calling and how much amount they are spending or what is the call volume, how many minutes they are calling, right? Now this is actually, you know, forms like a sound curve. So, you know, if, if, if I am speaking and if they just analyze that what I am speaking, it will be like, you know, this kind of pitch and wavelength kind of curve. So then we went into the spectral analysis. What spectral analysis does, whatever be the curve, they try to break it down and showcase it as a summation of sine and cosine curve. Okay? So, for any such honeycomb, whatever be the structure for their, uh, their repeat recharge or their call, you know, the way they were calling and using the data or the call volume, we can always find for different group this in number of the sine and the cosine curves, if you sum it up on, you know, overlay on top of that, you will come back to their structure. For different honeycomb, you will actually have this different curves, right? Now, once I have that, we then used their call network. And that's exactly where you said, let's use their call network. So now I have this connected graph for all the people there and for within each of those honeycombs. So these are, these are actually one, one honeycombs, right? And within that, I have their normal structure, normal <coughs> wavelength calculated in a certain fashion, summation of sine and cosine curve. Whenever there, you know, what happens is probably I am not going to churn but some people around me are probably going to churn. What will happen? Their curves will start changing. The moment their curve starts changing, the set pattern that I set for them based on their earlier behavior, it will not be able to predict. The moment it doesn't, it's not able to predict, and this is they're doing, you know, probably every day, if I'm checking, the moment it is differentiating, the error that I'm getting, the higher error, the color will change. So it almost becomes like a heat map. 
So, wherever the intensity of the color is red, that means whatever is their state pattern, either in terms of their recharge pattern or in terms of their call pattern, whatever it is, the moment it starts changing, this color change. So, even in that group, if I am going on Himalayan trek, it is not possible that everybody else has gone. So, what is the point? Probably my uh, color will be red, but does not matter to me, unless and until that whole group as a whole changing the color. So, if the whole group's color is red, it almost sure this people has already moved out. No point calling them, no point sending SMS, they have already moved out of it. The best people to attack are this yellow people, orange people, because they are still in the zone where they are changing their pattern in the position where they are thinking and they probably will be changing. So, instead of attacking one single person, we moved it from one single person to a group of people. If the group of people show the pattern and more people going out of it, we start calling them. And that is how the structure actually changed. The green, the better green, all these things are actually means that those are people are almost you know behaving the same way. And <coughs> telephone is such a necessity for us, we generally do not change our behavior much. Most of the day, you will find your calling patterns are very similar. Very rarely it changes. So, therefore, if I know that this is their set pattern, it is very obvious to figure out then within the group, you know, how the group is breaking their set pattern. So, yes. Is it worth to also identify the reason for the change? Yes. Yes. I will come to the next one. So, so far, all these things that we have done was pretty good. It was identifying. It was able to target people and probably these are the places where there are some people becoming red, I will not target. These are the people I will go and target. I have a much higher probability to save them. Yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, so what we did to keep it more simple because you know ultimately the call center people has to call. If I make it very complex, it will be difficult for them. We did it simple 10 deciles. So, whenever these errors are broken down into 10 deciles, whenever those errors are going beyond certain level, based on that the color codes had been defined. The moment those color codes are falling in the yellow orange zone, so yellow orange zone generally will be between 50 to 70 percent. We have found you know the moment it is going more than that, almost people has moved out, no point trying to save them. But over the time, what will happen is, because I am running this whole engine every day, over and over this red colors will diminish, because I will be almost starting to attack people much earlier than predicted. So, expectation is over the time, I will find the segments which are completely becoming red, rare. Now, it is possible that suppose this is, you know, a certain area of Kerala, because of flood, you know, my network itself is not working. Then I know that this is a certain reason why it is not working and why it has suddenly gone red. That is a different challenges. Yeah. So, uh, is not it possible that one of the micro segments mm -hmm. have large number of population as compared to others? Mm -hmm. Because of that, maybe it will take more time or days mm -hmm. to color to change mm -hmm. to get the feedback. Right. And by the time we have lost uh, more number of people. Mm -hmm. Right, possible, possible uh, that way. So, what we also tried to check is, sorry. So, when we were segmenting this uh, groups, creating micro segments, we also made sure that no one segment has more than probably, you know, half a million or, you know, some such kind of uh, amount of people. That we tried to make sure, but what we found when we did this three cross Cartesian products, we almost got very small, small segments. Because it is so huge number of segments, chances are very, very low that there will be segment which has almost you know half of the population. That is not possible. Either it is possible that all of those people are very similar, in which case breaking them down forcefully is not a suggestion. But in that case, you will probably have to set up a different threshold. There, instead of just setting up a percentage threshold, you can also set up an absolute threshold. That I am not only saying a 20% of it, but even when it is going beyond say, you know, some X amount people, 
I should be able to target them. No, red color is how many people are changing their behavior compared to their set behavior. So, so two things, one is their recharge pattern, which I have broken down in sine and cosine curve and kept it there. The other one is their call pattern. So, how they are calling, so suppose you know this is just not 30 days, but I have broken it down into 30 cross 24 hours, you know that is my time length. In that, how people are calling, when they are calling and what is the call volume. So, when they are calling is the point where it the curve will raise, the, what is the height of the curve that will define by how much they are talking, the minute of it, right. These are the two behavior that we check. No, it is not the call volume reduce. Compared to their actual usage, if the call volume either goes surprisingly up or surprisingly down. So, what we are trying to do is because I have based on their normal behavior, I have predicted that their normal behavior can be defined by summation of this 5 sine and cosine curve. So, every day this people's behavior will be trying to predict based on my set equation. Okay? And I will check compared to what has happened, what is the error that I am getting. The moment that error increases, now either the error can increase because it is high or the error increase because it is low. Accordingly, the color will change. So, less predictive it is, that is how the color will change. Because I am assuming and we have seen over the time, telecom behavior people generally do not change unless there is a reason for them to change. Okay? It is a, it's a almost like a necessity, like we eat food, telecom usage is almost like a necessity for that. Now, there are certain situations, for example, you know, geo has come, all of a sudden the data usage has spiked up. Those are the, you know, very structural change or the structural shift that has happened that we will have to consider separately. But in a normal set scenario when nothing is happening, people generally do not change their call patterns or the call behavior. So, what do we about That is, so, okay. So, what we do is we generally try to predict it and reassess our curve every 30 days. So, it goes by the calendar month. And the reason we have to do that, particularly for the rural areas, their behavior of richer changes during the crop sessions. So, when the crop cutting happens, generally they tend to use way more, you know, they go and spend way more. So, therefore, we need to change that, but it, we do that prediction every month. But that is done, you know, through the algorithm that we have written, it every month it kind of refreshes it. Yes, but that is for the group, not for the individual. So, there can be a scenario where someone is, was earning less, but eventually his earning increases and his spending also increases. So, do we restructure the micro segment such that one person can move from one micro segment to another? Yes. So, um, we tried checking that every three months, we found there is hardly any change. Then later we said once a year it is good enough to change that micro segment. It is possible that you know I have suddenly got a hike or you have suddenly got a hike, your salary has been doubled, but that situation happens little less. So, once a year is what we set ultimately, otherwise it becomes a humongous task. Yes. So, the behavior we have checked. So, when we say that this is my total behavior, that is actually one year behavior that has actually been taken. But when I check churn, I check a 30 days churn. I do not check a daily churn, I do not check a weekly churn because generally that is how people do not behave. Okay. So, generally it is a 30 days calendar month and also we have to see that it is not just how we do the model, how even people in the marketing team or in a call center team, they get their target, everything is you know more set in our uh, world is a more calendar month. So, it is much better if we do it in a calendar month to also set the process with them. Yes.
So there was some basic tagging was there like you know very low spend, moderate spend, medium spend, high medium spend, high spend, very high spend. But to be very honest we did not you know specifically went ahead and labeled them like that ok. Because if every you know at the end of one year when I try to do the this segmentation micro segmentation once again people may move from one segment to another segment. But in the meanwhile if you know things are changing if even a segment itself is completely moving even there I will find their errors very he heavily because that means my set prediction is not working because their whole behavior is changing so much. So then we can always go back and either quickly check what is happening there even before attacking them or if we know there is a reason why it is happening then we go back and just attack them. So any big changes happening it was very easy to figure out. Exactly if it is a very slow and you know small changes it is actually difficult to uh, predict but otherwise it was uh, okay to predict. Any more question? Yes. So Mm -hmm. Based on these two attributes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not okay. Saying so, um, okay, two things. One is where you are working, yeah. where you are staying, and what is your spend, total spend. So, now let's take situation where I have come from Bengal to Mumbai to stay, and in the same society, there is another person who is a Mumbai car, bought the uh, flat, and staying there with his family two places where you know the biggest change that will you will find is actually the call spent. I will be calling my home because I am a migrant person I will be calling my home and therefore my call spend will be way higher particularly at my home location versus the person who is staying with you know his or her family his or her this call spend will be much lower unless the person has you know a spouse or someone which is at a completely different location. In either cases both of our uh, you know uh, usage patterns are same. I am calling my home he, he or she is calling his or her spouse. So the ultimately call patterns will be very similar. Give me an example where you see the difference or a very big difference. Two people are going to the same let's assume that they go to the same company okay. and they stay in the same locality. Okay. Uh, but one person could just call very I mean call really we have not found that we have not found that happening and the reason is once again we are going back to our human psychology people tend to stay together where they find the similar people are staying. So I am not saying that there is no you know difference out of that but what I am saying is in a chunk you know if it is a kind of 50,000 people in a chunk you will hardly find there will be some outlier here and there. Because the amount spent that is different and yes we are taking a product of all the three. Yes exactly yeah. So one follow up question on yes. uh, basically the summation we are talking about right. So uh, do you find clear clusters in them or like when you do the summation of science and cosine then a lot of these cross products fall into those. Uh, there will be yeah. there will be particularly on the sign the, the wavelength and the how many of them you are considering. For example, the example I gave the person who charges 100 rupees at the starting and then they do not charge versus another person doing 5 such uh, you know 5 or 10 such 10 rupee uh, recharges you will always find their curves like the what summation I mean what sine cosine curve you are summing up there is a big difference. Yes. Yeah. So after this, 
now this is we have just identified who I mean what is happening, who are going to churn. The most important thing after this to figure out is why they are going to churn. If we can't identify them, then you know the, the call center guys will just call, what will they speak? Right? And most of the time they will speak, okay, we will give you this much cash back, stay with us. Now, people just shout back, why should I get up money? <laughs> Repair this. Right? So, we have to absolutely understand why people are churning. Now, what is very good to figure out through data science? Some of the why probably will also be able to analyze. Within that segment, if you analyze that their data uh, usage is falling, probably you know that you are they are using your network for call and less for the data, maybe your data charges are higher. Always people will have understanding whether they are a you know cheaper uh, data pricing uh, network or a higher uh, pricing network. So, you can always understand what is happening there, if it is a very trivial thing. But there are lots of non-trivial reasons why it happens. Okay. For that, we had a mandate, everyone, even the data science people, every 15 days, one day, we will choose a market, go and talk to them and analyze the call center calls. Why? The moment a person has challenge, there are some people who will find that there is a challenge, let us move out. But then moving out also has certain price. You need to, you know, then uh, first of all to spread that number to everybody. That is the biggest challenge when we speak to people. So, if I take a new number all of a sudden or if I, you know, just switch from one network to another, even there is a gap of 24 hours or 48 hours when this happens, you go and take an MNP and all those stuffs. So, biggest data was the call center data. What we did, we listened to, so all the call center calls are recorded. So, there was a big exercise happened and many of these calls are also transcribed. So, we actually had data like all the calls transcribed in English. Challenge was when it is a Hindi call, it was transcribed in English letter and God knows what the transcriber actually transcribed. <laughs> so, ideally what we did, we picked up lots of sample calls from them and we started analyzing, listening to that, do some speech analytics, trying to understand what is happening. Many a time, you know, all those artificial intelligence solution may not give you good solution. Be human, just listen to those calls. My suggestion many times, that works wonder compared to you start applying an artificial intelligence to do speech analytics and all those stuff. We are all human. The other side people who are human speaking the real challenges, just listen to those calls, you will actually get the actual reason, the heartbeat of the people. So, that is what we did we actually analyze the call center calls to early identify what is the reason. So, the moment some uh, segment is changing color, that is the early time we will start quickly look at their call center call. Are they calling for some certain reason? Are more of them calling for you know one particular reason or not? Okay? And every 15 days, we used to pick up one one such segment because we knew where they stay where they work, it was easy to actually identify those places, go and speak to them. Just pick up, you know, people are actually going and recharging, just go and ask that, I want to talk to you, how do you find simple feedback, how do you use the mobile. We found some wonder thing, for example, we went to Karnataka, I mean around Bangalore, some construction side, industrial side. These are the actually, you know, we found somehow people are actually spending pretty high there. Like in telecom, someone spending 150 rupees a month is actually considered a pretty high paid uh, person. We found at the construction side where most of the migrant laborers are actually staying, they are spending so much and we wanted to understand what is happening and their data spend was really, really high. So, when we went and spoke to those uh, laborers, they came out uh, during their lunch time. We just simply asked, how do you actually, you know, recharge and what do you do with the mobile? They actually showed, they are from UP, they show, told us that they actually do voice search on Google and watch the Vojpuri dance in the evening. Now, I would have never imagined, you know, people are at that place. So, aware about voice search that they go and on where they are doing it, viewclip.com, which is something even rare. But they are, because those chunk of people, they stay together, they have figured it out somehow. They are doing voice search of Vojpuri dance or Vojpuri gana, and that is what their evening time spend, that is what their entertainment. 
and they are using so much data. And how do they recharge? They very well know Airtel money. They very well know how to actually do this recharge. And they told there is actually one auto driver who actually you know help them recharge these things. So they are always at the jugars, every places in India. So it's very good to know, you know, talk to customer, understand, you know, what they say. And the moment you connect this real life examples with your data, it becomes very easy to understand what is the reason and how do you change the package or when you are calling them with what you should attack them. What is their point? What will actually help them to stay back? Sorry. Uh, whenever I try to call them, they hmm. say, uh, you know, like I don't get the option to actually you know, talk to a customer. Like I can choose one of the problems which is there in the idea, uh -huh. but it doesn't really give me an option most of the time to actually go talk to them. Actually, it's little hidden now. It's yeah, it's a little it's hidden, hidden, but it's not that they have stopped. So it's generally in the second layer. So in the IVR second layer, the last option is generally you talk to the. Yes. Generally, it's second layer, second or third. Yes. Yeah, if your questions are solved and that is where also the analytics has been applied. We have found what are the people most calling and asking. I can tell you if you spend one day at the call center, most of the people just call and ask what's my balance. <laughs> now for that, there is no point why you should actually pay the call center agent because every call they pick up you pay. So then if that is already there in the IVR, it's better that you do. I can tell you that, you know, because most of the call center agents are ladies, people actually call just to talk to ladies. <laughs> and I have myself listened to those calls. And it's horrible. So, yes. So, when you spoke about those call center calls, right. uh, don't you have any sense of anything like a tagging after the call is done? Because what you said is, uh, pick up some random calls, not relying completely on AI. Makes sense up to some extent, you know, especially in this domain where multilingual people, at least in this geography, you'll be facing. But the thing is, uh, that batch, some, the sample that you are taking, for, for, for example, cannot be very diverse because that might be very, very common problem and you're wasting your two minutes listening to it. Don't they just, like, suppose I'm a call center guy, you called me, I saw, listened to your problem, solved it, or didn't solve it, whatever it was, I cut the phone. I can have a tag, right? what was the problem, resolved, not resolved, mm -hmm. and that makes it much easier for you to target the right mm -hmm. calls that you want to listen, because I can always mm -hmm. have other options, that it was nothing related to this, and then you can actually go back and target it. Okay. So, okay. So, it this options. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so now. yeah. Yeah. So I don't have much after this. I can answer this, but probably offline I'll answer. I'll quickly ra rather uh, close this. So there is an answer why we could not do that, and I'll tell you after this. Okay. And um, yeah. So I just wanted to show you the impact. So traditional when we do charner versus non charner, and this is not just you know the in-house data science team. This is multiple big consulting team came and tried it. Biggies came and tried it. The best one was for every churner, it was predicting eight non-churners. We never could apply such model. Best model was able to predict just before seven to nine days. And generally, people has already churned out by then. And the revenue saved, if we apply that, was hardly 8%. When we applied that model, for every one churner, it was half. Matlab, for every two churner, we predict wrongly predict one non-churner as a churner. And it was at least predicting before 15 to 18 days. And revenue saved that way was 60%. That was a huge difference that was made. Thanks to Takish Telecom that I got to know how they have done it. And for the Harvard Business School Statistics Department. One more thing I just want to say at the end. Industry may not have all the answers. Please connect with academicians. Please connect with researchers. They might have some very different research which you might be able to apply. So in whatever organization you are, please try to establish this you know, research institute connections. It will always help. And it, you can get wonder solutions from them. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>